It's common for games of MVM to run relatively frictionless until those waves show up. The ones we're discussing pre-game strategy takes up more time than the gameplay itself only for the wave to fail anyways and prompt a collective rage quit. Some may call them difficulty spikes, and while a couple of them fit that bill, they're usually more in line with the concept of a knowledge check. It's not so much an issue of direct execution, more just understanding what classes, upgrade selections, positionings, and tactics are most optimal. These are the waves I always find myself carrying people through whenever I queue for a game in progress. Hopefully this video helps you do the same. Just a few things to note, we're only gonna be focusing on waves that often end in failure, rather than the ones that just provide the occasional pushback. This also means that all of this video's attention will be on the three main tours of the game, those being Two Cities, Gear Grinder, and Mecha Engine. No Wave 666 because that whole wave's a shit show, and that could be a whole video unto itself. Now, I'm going to assume that you watching this video already understand the basics of MVM. The best loadouts, upgrades, class roles, standard gameplay mechanics, pretty much everything I've covered on this channel before. You know, Scout collects money, Engineer should max dispenser range, Soldier should use the beggars, don't shoot the uber medics, that kind of stuff I won't be addressing. What you should do with this information, however, that'll all be up for discussion. Now, to be clear, these aren't the only ways, or hell, even the technically most optimal ways to complete each of these waves. They're just what I find to be the most consistently applicable and easy to execute. Like the tank busting guide, I'm hoping to make this the go-to reference point for whenever your team is struggling. Everything's chaptered appropriately, so come back and forth as you wish. Audience retention be damned. Though, if you want to help me offset that, well, you know what to do. It looks like MVM's never gonna see another update again, including basic bug fixes for that matter, so we can be rest assured that this video should stay relevant until the end of time. And with that, I think we hit our stalling quota. Enjoy the guide. Hamlet Hostility Wave 1 is easily the hardest first wave in all of two cities and potentially every mission eligible for this video. This is largely down to the fact that Rottenberg doesn't really give you much time to adapt to the oncoming robots. On a map like Manhattan, for instance, you're given ample opportunity to prepare on-the-fly sticky traps and alike, whereas the more enclosed cliffside of Rottenburg doesn't grant the same ability without leaning on memorization. With Hamlet Hostility having the least amount of starting credits of all the advanced missions, you don't have too much leeway in the realm of making mistakes, but it can be cleared pretty handily if you know what to do. For this wave, I'd highly recommend the standard Two Cities team comp, though subbing the demo for a competent sniper does work too. The wave starts off rather easy, with five groups of scouts dropping on the left side, followed by a giant soldier on the right. These ones aren't hard, but I'd highly recommend that if you're playing medic, you hold off on using your uber charge and your shield. These encounters don't need it. Instead, once the giant soldier is dealt with, move back over to the left side and crit your team's demo man for a high damaging sticky trap. If you're the demo, make sure you spread out the stickies a little bit more than usual. The uber medics can be somewhat unpredictable, in where they'll choose to walk. Detonate the stickies once the medics drop down onto them, and have your own medic activate their shield to block the incoming rockets from the soldiers. Once they're all taken care of, we're gonna move over to the right side and do the exact same thing. The engineer should move his dispenser somewhere around here, and the demo should start preparing a sticky trap on the top right cliff side. Once all your stickies are out, I'd highly recommend the demo stand far away out of the line of fire. Him getting the stickies off is vital to the encounter. I'd also I also recommend the scout temporarily position himself on the left side of the map. The medics drop a lot of money, enough to miss the credit bonus if not fully retrieved, so camp over here for a bit to guarantee a safe run-in. The game plan from here is pretty much identical to the left side. Demo pops the stickies, medic uses his shield whenever the ensuing small bots start firing, and the rest of your team burns down the giants. If for whatever reason the small bots overwhelm your team to the point where you're unable to kill the medics up front, I'd recommend retreating to this balcony and setting up a trap in the tunnel. It's safe and effective, albeit a bit less snappy. Happy. And that's all the hard parts done. From here, your chances for failure are extremely low.
We're not leaving Hamlet just yet, because wave 4 of this mission also poses some trouble. Most of the wave is fine, actually. The left side spawns groups of multivaried heavy bots, which is nothing a soldier can't handle, and the right side only spawns 20 soldier bots around a quarter way through the wave, which the medic's shield can easily invalidate. The big issues come when they spawn alongside the 12 super scouts that this mission possesses, topped off with teleporter building engineers that'll sneakily spawn behind you in the late game. This is actually one of the most polarizing waves in the game. Experienced players will often resort to going AFK and aiming for taunt kills at the end of the wave, while newer players will constantly find themselves on edge due to the super scouts jacking up everyone's heart rate by upwards of 30%, usually for no reward. I frequently see people blaming this on one particular player, and scapegoating like that is completely unwarranted. No one class can single-handedly block 12 super scouts in the midst of of getting railed by minigun bullets. It needs to be a team effort. The Heavy can body block them to keep them from moving forward, the NG can sentry block to achieve the same effect, the Soldier can continually stun them in place via Rocket Specialist, and the Scout has Mad Milk Slow every 20 seconds. If the first block doesn't work, there should always be many more lines of defense available. For sentry blocking in particular, you can line it up with this small section of the ground that doesn't have any grass. This will keep them in place the vast majority of the time. If the heavies are laying on too much hurt, an even safer and less finicky spot is right here beside the steps. While it may not be in range to attack much, it's the safest way to keep the super scouts in check. Later on in the wave, you'll end up getting a couple of engineer spawns. The further back the bomb, the closer to the hatch the engineer's base will be. This means that if at any point the bomb goes beyond the tunnel, you'll want to get a team member, preferably a soldier, to start hunting them down. The engineers will often be out of sight, just make sure they aren't out of mind too. Don't get too comfortable chilling at the front if the bomb isn't in the vicinity. The possibility of a last minute teleporter catapulting a super scout to victory is a constant. Also, one more thing, these medics are some of the only ones within two cities that don't pop uber upon being brought down to low HP. So regardless of your class, feel free to target them. That's really it. Kill the super scouts, make sure that no engineers set themselves up a base, and the rest is your standard AoE fest. Bot Bash Wave 3 may not have all that much variety, but that doesn't mean it can't cause you trouble. The wave starts off with shotgun heavies on the left side and bat scouts on the right. I recommend your engineer starts off the wave by putting a sentry on this side of the map. This will prevent the rest of your team from dispersing their damage. That's not the hard part though. The real issue is the giant heavy that drops down afterwards. Packed with crits, two giant uber medics, and a legion of spy bots shanking your toes all at the same time. If not dealt with properly, this one giant can run the bomb to the hatch without a fuck to give. To prevent this from happening, the most important thing you need to do is burst down the medics. And this is where your team soldier gets some time in the spotlight. Buy a crit canteen before the wave starts, jump onto the rock from the back of it for added aggro protection, and shove those red rockets right in the medic's mouth. To make things easier, it's best you have a target that can hold the giant's aggro while the rest of your team bangs out the medics. I recommend a heavy protected by a medic shield or an engineer's crit immune wrangled sentry with building health up. Upgrades. Just don't forget to also look out for the spies. Despite this, the heavy still might overpower you. It's inevitable a couple of deaths will happen, but that's okay so long as the medics are dead. He'll be on borrowed time from there. If you do die during this encounter, I recommend buying some bullet res mid-wave. It'll up your survivability versus the oncoming robots. There's a good chance some spies will still be lurking around spawn. If you decide to kill them, don't forget to pick up the credits that they drop. Once the heavy is dead, all the small bots remaining spawn on the right side, so if you're playing NG, be sure to redirect your buildings around that area. From here, things shouldn't be too hard. Health on kill and the added bullet res will keep you alive just fine. The three Force of Nature scouts will spawn on the left side at the end of the wave though, so be sure to look out for those. But honestly, once the crit heavy's dealt with, things usually work out just fine.
Metro Wave 3 starts off with giant scouts trying to cap the bomb, while simultaneously hordes of minigun heavies are attempting to mince you into ash, while also simultaneously a bunch of bannered soldiers and a force of nature scout attack you from above while trying to swarm the gate. This combination is hell for pretty much every group of new players, and around 90% of the time, this snowballs into an unfortunate situation. So let's melt that bitch before it starts rolling. First, you're gonna want your team's engineer and soldier to take the top floor, while the rest of your team stay down below. Now the soldiers spawn a little while after the heavies do, so your top floor classes can allocate some firepower towards them for a bit. But once they're on the catwalk, both classes will need to focus exclusively on killing them. The NG should position his sentry here to block the giant super scout while wrangling the sentry to keep it alive, while the soldier should preemptively pop a banner and fire at everything in sight. As for the heavies and jumping scouts below, a heavy medic combo will really come in handy. I recommend the medic decks himself out in crit canteens with the specialist upgrade, and I also recommend the heavy max out his bullet res for added safety. This is a pretty long encounter, so the medic will want to cycle between all of his cooldowns. The shield, the uber charge, and the shared canteens. Once the top floor is cleared out, the rest of your team is free to join you in burning through the heavies. But that first minute is a gauntlet stage you need to be prepared prepared for. The middle of the wave isn't difficult at all, just a bunch of melee heavies with some non-crit demos. Nothing special. The end of the wave is where things start to pick back up, with even more jumping scouts alongside a bevy of soldiers. They can put out a lot of damage, enough to cause the occasional wipe. So my best advice is if you die at any point within the mission, go to the upgrade station and stock up on some blast res. It'll give you extra survivability that'll take some stress off your medic. As long as you don't get too overwhelmed, you should be fine. Metro Wave 5 is perhaps the single most difficult mission in all of two cities. It has its lax moments, but for the most part, it doesn't relent on constantly throwing you shit to deal with. The wave starts off with a giant blast soldier boss fight. He's probably the easiest boss in the game, so no worries there. It's what follows after that tends to be the tipping point. Immediately after the boss dies, you'll be confronted with groups of soldiers, some of which are crit boosted, alongside Fist of Steel heavies from above. For this situation, you'll want a repeat of Wave 3. Soldier and Engineer stay up top to whittle down the heavies, while your team's Medic, Heavy, and whatever other DPS class you have take the floor. The classes up top can join you down below once all of the heavies are cleared out. The small bot soldiers might not seem all that deadly at this point in the game, but they can steamroll you without proper protection. I'd recommend liberal use of ubers, canteens, and shields on your medic side. After that, you'll get two waves of minigun heavies. One normal, the other crit boosted. Alongside a couple of giant demos. Not much in the wave struggle here. However, once you see this combination of icons up top, this signifies the beginning of the hardest gauntlet stage in the game if approached unplanned. Here you have to deal with an endless amount of support bots, consisting of scouts, soldiers, demo knights, and engineers. In the midst of all that chaos, a giant crit rapid fire demo will drop down onto the field with his butt buddy giant medic. This is where most of the problems begin. The high health pools of the giants demand siphoning damage away from the torrent of small bots and reallocating it towards them. And an invasion of this magnitude left unchecked, even for seconds, is enough to punch half your team a ticket to the spectator train. This is most notably the case with robot engineers. If your team isn't there to pick them off, they will easily turn the front lines into their very own foothold with no competition. It gets even worse if they make it past the first point though. They'll set up on the crates up top and turn three quarters of the map into impenetrable bot territory. That's space you can't afford to be giving up when one popped uber from the quick fix medic is enough to traverse large amounts of turf with no resistance. Remember, these robots don't cap the gates. They all go straight for the hatch. So first I'm gonna tell you how to avoid this situation entirely, but also teach you how to deal with it if it does manage to occur. The best thing you can do is cut that possibility off at the source with three separate crit canteen usages. One for each individual quick fix medic. Trust me, 300 credits is more than worth the investment of securing your team an easy path to the final wave. For even more added security, the engineer should keep his sentry on the top floor and most importantly, 
not wrangled. You'll want the sentry to auto fixate on whatever small bots draw near. Wrangling the sentry only gives them ample opportunity to slip behind your team unnoticed and plant the seeds of what could be your inevitable downfall. The doubled firing speed isn't worth preventing that possibility. If everything goes to shit and you still get pushed back regardless, don't try to claw your way back in and reclaim the front lines. Instead, let them come to you. The worry of your Uber charge or crit canteen duration being cut short is much less prevalent if you own the land. That's really it. Spam crit canteens when the giants drop and make sure no engineers get behind. But if that for some reason doesn't cut it, get a sentry on top of the crates to prevent the engineers from setting up top, avoid challenging them in their domain, and spam crit canteens when it's safe to do so. If enough of your damage dealers follow this criteria, you shouldn't be worried. Empire Wave 5 is mostly a cakewalk, and that's largely down to almost every robot spawning from the lower portion of the map. This means you won't have to split your damage between two different sections, but the trade-off is that some of the encounters you'll face are a bit more difficult. Three in particular tend to be the biggest causes for failure, those being the giant black box soldiers, the small crit heavies, and the giant bonk scouts at the end. Let's go over them chronologically. The giant black box soldiers aren't very deadly, but they regain 1000 health for each rocket they successfully land, allowing them to stay alive in perpetuity. The biggest mistake people make here is pushing them away via knockback. The Heavy's Rage and the Pyro's Air Blast do nothing but add falloff to everyone's DPS. You're not helping by using them, you're hurting. Instead, do the opposite. Get your maximum ramp up as heavy, mark the giants with the Fano War if needed, and hell, if you got some blast res, the medic can often land multiple swings of the Uber Saw risk-free. They might heal off you, but if you get a full Crits Creek to play with in exchange, that's a worthwhile trade. You are given a a lot of credits to play with on Empire Wave 5, so crit canteens can work well, but usually they're more of a last resort option when they're really pushing your team back. For the waves of crit heavies, you'll basically just need three cooldowns ready for each pack, be they defensive or offensive. Typically, a medic shield is the go-to option for the first and the third packs, but you can also use a sticky trap, gas passer, uber and AoE class, or stand behind where they spawn and pop a crit canteen. If you don't have any crit resistance, they can take you out in literal milliseconds, so I'd recommend maxing it out either at the beginning or whenever you die during the wave. But nonetheless, you should be fine. And as for the Bonk Scouts, just build a wall. You can get in a line to body block them and keep them stationary while their invulnerability wears off. There will be a couple of spies running behind, so your team soldier or pyro should track them down, but for everyone else, this will prevent any kind of last minute capture. Empire Wave 6 only has a few things to look out for, but those encounters are some of the deadliest in the game. Chief among them is the Giant Health on Kill Deflector Heavy, a boss robot that can single-handedly be your demise if not prepared for. The easiest way to deal with them is to use a peculiar, yet very optimal team comp. Three heavies, each with max firing speed, bullet res, and three crit canteens each, alongside a medic for heals, a soldier for AoE, and an engineer for a teleporter and dispenser. For the boss fight, have a medic crits Krieg a heavy while the two others spam crit canteens, all safely behind an activated shield. Done. 15 seconds and the hardest robot in the game is dealt with. Of course, he also spawns alongside four Force of Nature scouts up top, and you know the drill at this point. The team soldier and engineer should go up top and deal with them. If you're the NG, remember to once again place the sentry here to lock the scouts in place for a brief period of time. If you're a bit late on the draw with the blocking spot, or you're not confident in your team soldier, I recommend any heavy with a spare crit canteen book it for point A. Remember, crits don't have damage fall off, so a boosted minigun on its own should be enough to take all of them out. After that's over and dealt with, you'll get a bunch of uber medic paired robots that'll drop down in droves and this is yet another reason you'll want to bring a soldier. Keep him crit boosted as much as possible, be it canteens, uber charge, whatever. This'll easily one-shot all of the medic pairs. For the three heavies on your team, shooting the uber meds will cause them to pop their invincibility. So if you don't want to be entirely useless, putting on the boxing gloves and going ham is your best bet. It's almost certain that a couple of them will pop uber anyways, but as long as it's not the majority, they won't be a sticking point. 
After they're taken care of, it's just another bunch of crit, health on kill deflector heavies, but they're nowhere near as vitalic as the original boss robot, so you'll definitely be fine from here. Broken Parts Wave 4 is known for being both very annoying and also deceptively difficult for new players. On the small robot end of things, it doesn't seem too bad. All you have to deal with are 100 spies, crit scouts that spawn over the course of the wave, and a couple of NG bots every now and again. But as it turns out, this combination of robots actually covers their bases quite well. The most well-known counter to a spy bot is a pyro, but with all the crit scouts on the field, pyro easily gets both outranged and out damaged. The best counter for the crit scouts is an engineer sentry, but do I even need to say it? So for this wave, pick a spot, whether it be close to the cave or a little further back near the tank spawn, and have an NG and Pyro stick together like glue. The Pyro can track down all of the spies with little risk to himself, and the engineer sentry can single-handedly take care of the scouts. If you want to be really generous, the home wrecker will come in handy for this wave more than any other. Of course, you still have four other members of your team, all of which can still do a number on both robot breeds. I recommend and they congregate relatively close to the pack as well, but preferably on top of the rocks. The spies will have to work much harder for their backstabs, if they can even land them in the first place. Sticking together will consolidate the spy bots into a much denser pack, making things both faster and safer for your team. Despite any kind of mitigation, dying is still relatively common, so I recommend everyone maxes out crit resistance to take the edge off from the scouts, and if you end up dying anyways, there's a good chance you'll be bombarded by spies as you leave spawn. Be sure to kill them and pick up their money before teleporting back to the front. If you lose control of the front lines and have the bomb carried out of the tunnel, the engineer bots will plant their bases deep into the map, similarly to Hamlet Wave 4. For this reason, it's very important you keep track of the bomb and make sure it stays in the cave. Funnily enough, this is actually the easy part. The hard part comes when the giant heavies begin to spawn, each one attached with one uber medic each. The big issue here is that the time intervals between each heavy are extremely minimal, so it's very common for two giant heavies to be alive on the field simultaneously. A pyro with gas passer ain't gonna cut it. Demo isn't bad, but he only becomes modically consistent from this location on the left side. Anywhere else, and he'll have the same aggro problem as pyro. This is only further amplified if you get pushed back beyond the cave, as the range in which the giant heavies can aggro onto you is only further heightened. If they get even the slightest bit of momentum, they'll usually milk it for all it's worth. So, get a sniper. I don't mean for the advice in this video to be too simplistic, but for this wave, just get a sniper. If you crouch jump onto the rock from back here, you'll be invincible to all oncoming robots from the front. Once in position, all you'll need is a single headshot to wipe out each heavy's medic. I know Sniper can be a scary class for new players, as his skill floor is comparatively much higher than every other class barring Spy, but I promise you guys, it shouldn't be an issue here. Giants are already pretty easy to headshot, but Giant Heavies? With a revved up minigun? You have to try to miss a target that slow. Having a Pyro or a Demo on your team isn't an issue at all, in fact, it's encouraged. Just don't rely on them as the primary medic picker. This wave is not friendly to them. The difference between running a sniper and not running one is staggering. It's definitely worth the attempt if the other classes aren't cutting it. Oh boy. This is a big one. You've gotta be a really fucking big difficulty spike to cause so many groups to disband even when they're inches away from completion. That's Broken Parts Wave 6, arguably the most difficult wave in the game, which, funnily enough, comes right after one of the easiest, if not the easiest, wave in the game. There's a lot to unpack here, so I think it's best we break this wave down into five stages setup, the small bots, the two tanks, giants and super scouts, and finally the 10 rapid fire soldiers plus tank combo. For the team composition, I'd recommend one NG, one heavy, one soldier, two tank busters, and one whatever pick of your choice. You can stack multiple of the same class, it doesn't matter too much. Because the last wave of the mission only contains a boss robot that most groups can probably beat blindfolded, I recommend you treat wave 6 as Broken Parts' actual final way. This means any non-offensive scout should switch to a more aggressive base class, and everyone should be maxing out canteens, preferably crits. 
Most importantly for this wave, you'll want to max out your resistances and primary weapon as much as possible, but make sure you save between 500 and 1000 credits before starting the wave. Broken Parts is a credit ocean, and because of this, it's common to see people dumping their enhanced paycheck into shit like health regen because, fuck it, may as well. But don't do this. Instead, use that cash to spam buybacks whenever you die and restock on canteens whenever needed. This will help tremendously. And lastly, the NG should put a two-way teleporter somewhere around here so your team can stock up on canteens and or catch an emergency super scout later on. Upon starting the wave, you'll be greeted with over 100 small crit robots of many different varieties. If you max out all of your resistances and buy three to four points of health on kill, you should be mostly fine, but given the sheer amount of bots, a couple of deaths are inevitable. To prevent them from advancing too far, I'd recommend the NG puts his sentry behind the rock, anywhere in the line of fire, and it'll get destroyed extremely quickly, even when wrangled. So having it as a safeguard to pick off the couple of stragglers that sneak by will be very warranted support. Try to attack from multiple different locations to disperse the robot's damage. You have the map advantage, abuse it while you can. Once most of the bots are cleared out, this is when the first tank will begin to spawn. At this point, there are no other oncoming threats for the next 20 seconds, so every team member should gang up on the tank. Once the giants begin to spawn, your two main tank busters should continue following the tank while your four other classes stay up front. This is the hardest part of the mission by far. A giant quick fix medic will be attached to a giant crit deflector heavy on three separate occasions all while super scouts are trying to pass you by. Because of this, I recommend an engineer, soldier, or demo focus down the super scouts primarily. Rocket specialist, sentry blocking, or premeditated sticky traps will keep them from running out of the area. For the sentry block spot, it's best you put it beside this rock with a little bit of a gap between it. This will keep the super scouts in check while also temporarily stalling the giant medic combos should they reach that point. It won't get much action, but when it does, it'll be much needed protection. If that spot is ever challenged too regularly, you can also place it back here on the right side of the tunnel's entrance. This'll work too. If the sentry gets destroyed and one happens to slip by regardless, get someone to meet them at spawn via the two-way teleporter. The super scouts are generally the biggest cause of losing the wave. Make sure they're always on your radar. As for the giant medic combos, this is where we're gonna do a little bit of cheese. I mentioned earlier how crouch jumping onto this rock from behind effectively makes you invisible to all the robots in front of it, a trick every class can use to their advantage. First, if he hasn't already, make sure the engineer puts his dispenser near the rock. It's not 100% necessary as there is an ammo pack below, but it does make things much easier. Second, get one or more of your power classes, usually a soldier, demo, or heavy, to position themselves onto the rock. If you DPS them down from up here, it's effectively free damage with no risk to your survivability. The only thing you need to look out for is not popping the uber medic which, generally, requires the finishing blow to be above 50 damage in order to be prevented. To err on the side of caution, pyros, NGs, and far away, non-crit boosted scouts and heavies should hold off on attacking when the medics are at low HP. Soldiers, demos, snipers, and max ramp up crit boosted scouts and heavies go wild. Do this for all three giant pairs, blow your canteens on them if necessary, and that's the hard part over. After the last medic's dead, the second tank should be nearing death if it hasn't been chomped through already. Run back to the front to rally with your team as you prepare for the soldier orgy that's about to commence. The most common mistake made in this situation is everyone hyper fixating on the soldiers. Now, I get it. It makes sense to aim for the targets actually attacking you rather than focus on the armless damage sponge on wheels, but you'd be shocked at how often this final tank ends up deploying the bomb. Your team just can't pump out the numbers in time. So I recommend the same strategy as before. The two busters follow the tanks while the four other teammates start chewing through the soldiers. Generally, this will secure victory, but if the tank is ever visible from the hatch and is still relatively healthy, everyone needs to focus their attention on it immediately. The soldiers can wait, the tank absolutely cannot. If you're one of the designated tank busters and the soldiers start 
start targeting you, try to use the tank's hitbox to shield you from the rockets that they fire. It's large enough to get out of their line of sight. Speaking of the soldiers, you can usually use the rock god spot to cheese these ones as well, but you'll probably be in the field at this point, so it doesn't come up too often. If your team is coordinated, the soldiers will often go down before the tank does. If that happens, rally with your tank busters and start demolishing what's left to make sure that there's no chance it ends up deploying. <sighs> That was a lot. I guess the TLDR version is to tank bust appropriately, abuse the rock god spot, and spam crit canteens like mad, but I don't think that explanation would do it justice. I genuinely feel for all the low tour groups getting castrated so late into the mission. This wave, more than any other, needed a comprehensive breakdown. Bone Shaker Wave 5 only contains two somewhat threatening phases, but both of them need to be properly prepared for. Otherwise, you risk an unfortunate snowball effect. First things first, max out your blast resistance on this wave. That small little icon in the support section doesn't do their presence justice. You'll be hammered with rockets the entire wave, so you'll definitely want to up the amount you can tank. The wave starts off with 20 uber medic pairs alongside a fuckload of soldier bots. These are best taken care of by your team's medic picker, or you can pop them right as they spawn, wait out their ubers, and fire at them from atop the god spot rock. Both are viable strategies, just make sure you pick one. Very few groups can handle 20 invincible small bot pairs without some kind of mitigation tactic. Once they're dead, you'll get a deluge of support soldiers alongside some crit bowmen and giant heavies. This seems like much, but if your whole team is pumping numbers, they'll usually go down without a hitch. The biggest problem comes with the second half of the phase, where the latter four giant heavies all come out with two uber medics, a condensed but much more potent issue we saw in Broken Parts Wave 4. The solution is the exact same. Again, you'd be shocked at how these few giants not getting their medics torn off expeditiously is an enough for the entire wave to be sunk then and there. You just can't beat the long-ranged, near-invincible strategy of the sniper perched onto the godspot rock. Not only will the sniper have the easiest time taking out the medics, but explosive headshots will be enough to two-shot all the neighboring soldiers. Of course, the sweaty high tour in me wants to recommend this strategy for every wave in the game. I don't do this because I understand sniper's heightened skill floor can lead to inconsistent results for new players. But on giant minigun revving heavies, your dog could probably hit a 50% headshot ratio. If you want a sticky demo or gas passer pyro to accompany you for the harder to hit small bots in the beginning, that won't be an issue. But for the giant heavies, the sniper should take charge. The wave will be easily conquered from there. Bone Shaker's main concerns are the half dozen giant quick fix medics each attached to a particularly deadly giant. Usually, one quick fix medic combo is enough to set a lot of low tours back. But six of them is a recipe for disaster. Luckily, the red team can counter with an extremely effective combo of their own. A Scottish resistance demo, and an engineer. On the upgrade front, the demo will want to max out his sticky bomb's damage, one tick of clip size, one health on kill, and maxing out his crit canteens. Any extra credits you have can be poured into movement speed and resistances. On the engineer side of things, all you really need is a two-way teleporter, with the entrance positioned towards spawn and the exit placed next to this wall. This area of the map is the demo's new perch, and none of you should bother him over here. Drawing aggro towards him is something we want to avoid. From here, the strategy is simple. Pop a crit canteen, set up a massive crit sticky pile, wait for the giant medics to walk on top of it, and detonate it right under their feet. Do this for each medic spawn, and use the teleporter to restock on canteens when necessary. Alternatively, you could have a medic bitch of your own stock crits on your behalf. Either strategy works, just as long as it's communicated beforehand. Pulling this off successfully isn't very difficult, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. First, you need to get the right spot for your sticky traps. Shoot them too far to the left, and you'll completely miss your target. What I like to do is align my crosshair with the lights on the right side of the spawn. This hasn't failed me yet. If you're ever scared of drawing aggro, be it by a giant or by the snipers, be sure to hide behind some cover. 
Luckily, the demo is given a see-through wall right next to him, so he can detonate his stickies on Q without placing himself in the line of fire. And finally, all of your teammates need to stay the fuck away from the sticky pile. It's very common for close-range classes like Scout, Spy, and especially Pyro to run towards the giant soldiers, only for the bot to shoot the ground and disperse your sticky trap, ruining the one-shot potential. Remember, even one quick-fix medic Uber can spiral into a loss if improperly handled. That extra bit of flamethrower damage is not worth the risk. From here, it's pretty straightforward. A couple of small uber med pairs will spawn periodically, which the demo can one-shot, no crits necessary, followed by an orgy's worth of pyro and medic pairs, which a spread out sticky trap can mostly take care of. That's really it. Just let the demo do his thing while the rest of your team picks up whatever survives. Might not be all that fun, but neither is wiping for 20 minutes without a win. Take your pick. Although nowhere near the scale of Broken Parts Wave 6, this one might actually have just as high of a failure to completion ratio. On paper, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, most of the wave is nothing but mini scouts, some of the weakest robots in the game. But the combination of the tank, 8 super scouts, and engineers setting up bases at every corner of the map makes things go haywire rather quickly. Especially when you consider that Decoy is the smallest map in the game, not giving you much wiggle room for sorting things out. To remedy this, you'll want a heavy for maximizing single target damage, an NG to sentry block the scouts among his other duties, a pyro to burn down the tank, and a sniper or soldier to track down the engineers. At the beginning, I recommend your team's NG place the sentry right here. This'll temporarily keep the super scouts in place. I say temporarily because even despite having a dedicated engineer tracker, it's inevitable that at least one of them will get a base set up at some point. And if the super scouts start invincibly spawning from behind, the blocking spot won't cut it. That's where the heavy comes in with a very niche pick I have yet to praise. The Natasha. Now I know I said a while back that this weapon was D tier, but you have to keep in mind that that ranking was for two cities only. On other maps, the Natasha can be your golden ticket. Keep firing at the super scouts and they'll run the bomb a fraction of the distance that they would with any other minigun. They might still breach your defenses regardless due to the temporary invulnerability upon being teleported, so I like to stock up on emergency crit canteens. The added damage and lack of fall off will allow you to snipe the scout from long ranges. If for whatever reason the bomb gets driven out of the frontline area, I recommend everyone falls back and defends closer to the hatch. It'll consolidate your DPS much more effectively and make the money easier to grab. Once all the super scouts are dead, this wave becomes a complete joke. An NG sentry could probably solo the whole thing. But for the best results, everyone should position themselves wherever the bomb's at and set up camp there. You should have no more problems at this point. Manworks Wave 3 is usually a breaking point for many groups. It requires multiple classes doing their jobs correctly. The main threats on this wave are the 12 Super Scouts, the 2 Tanks, and 8 Giant Heavies attached with 3 Uber Medics each. For the Super Scouts, running the same strategy mentioned on Decoy is the best way to go in my opinion. Put a Sentry in a specific spot to keep them locked in place, while the team's Heavy runs the Natasha for that extra safety blanket. Again, the Heavy can pick up a crit canteen or two for even more added protection, but no enemy teleporters are active on this map, so it's usually not needed. If you're the team's NG, be sure to make note of the blue arrows that are visible during the pre-game setup. This indicates what direction the robots will be running the bomb from, and each side has a different blocking spot. For the left, you'll want to place it near the corner of this wall, and for the right, you'll want it next to the stairs. Usually, your sentry will end up getting overwhelmed when the small soldiers drop, so it'd be smart to switch to the right at that point to let it tank more hits. If the sentry still goes down or one still happens to slip by, the slowing effect of the heavy's Natasha will stop the scouts in their tracks. The tanks will spawn midway through the super scout rush alongside the soldiers, so it's recommended you get two dedicated tank busters to tag team them while the rest of your team stays up front. I recommend a flog pyro or beggar soldier, but if your sniper wants to opt for the carbine and bushwhacker strat, that works too. Oh yeah, speaking of which, you'll definitely want a sniper for this wave, as he's by far the most consistent medic killer for these giant heavies. The open field grants you ample safety to land the explosive headshots required, 
prepared to take out the medics. I wouldn't hedge my bets on an unfamiliar demo or gas pass or pyro for these ones. Yeah, Sniper's generally more difficult, but again, it's a giant revved minigun heavy. A peg-legged tortoise could probably outrun these guys. If you're playing Scout, make sure you have Mad Milk online as best you can. It'll be paramount for your team's survivability during this part of the wave. Hit scan robots are very easy to tank so long as they're milked, so buy an ammo canteen or two just in case you need that instant recharge. Funnily enough, the giant heavies aren't usually the main concern at this part of the wave. To lay on some added pressure, groups of small bat scouts will start running through the field. They aren't deadly at all, but it's often the case that your whole team goes up front to focus the heavies, only for one measly little scout to slip behind you and cap the bomb moments away from completion. To prevent this, get your team's NG to place their sentry on top of the bomb. You may miss out on some frontline DPS, but that white protection is definitely worth the trade-off. Focus the super scouts, burn down the tanks, explode of headshot the uber medics and guard the bomb with your sentry when the heavies are in play. Do all of that and you should be fine. Realistically, if you were able to conquer Manslaughter Wave 3, Wave 5 shouldn't pose much issue. The biggest problem I see when it comes to this mission's last wave comes in the form of an uncoordinated team comp. The large amounts of high HP robots require strong damage dealers, the ubermeds require someone to pick them off, and the four tanks will require fuckloads of DPS to be allocated towards them. For this wave, I'd go with two heavies for maximum damage, a demo or preferably sniper for killing the ubermeds, an engineer for obvious reasons, and two tank busters, with at least one of them being a flog pyro. Soldier can work well in this regard, but he'll have to deal with the five dozen reflect pyros and the deflector property on the small heavies. It'll be harder than usual for him to enact his standard game plan, but due to the sheer amount of tanks, he does have a place. The wave starts off with giant soldiers attached with one uber medic each, coupled with the aforementioned pyros. The key thing to note here is that they spawn on both sides of the map, simultaneously, so your team's demo or sniper will need to take out the medic on both ends as soon as possible. Easier said than done for the demo, not so much for the sniper. It's one of the many reasons he's preferred for this wave. Once the soldiers and pyros are down, this is when two tanks will begin to spawn alongside a few batches of heavies. Your flog pyro should immediately book it for the tanks, using them as cover from the oncoming bullets if necessary. The rest of your team should help burn them down whenever there's a moment to breathe, but if you're ever getting shot at by the heavies, killing them should be your main priority. Not burning down the first two tanks fast enough is usually what takes out most teams. As long as your first two tank busters do their job correctly, this wave's biggest hurdle will be no more. From there, everything is easy. Nothing but giant demos, fist of steel heavies, pyros, and demo knights, all of which your two heavies can make quick work of. A couple of tanks left as well, but the added leeway you get for dealing with them makes them easy to conquer. Though, like wave 3, I recommend your NG places his sentry on the bomb to prevent a small demo knight from running behind and getting a last minute capture. As long as you have the right team composition, you can pretty much let your upgrades do all the work from there, but step 1 to that equation is often overlooked. Hopefully, now it isn't. I'm gonna couple these ones together, because when it comes to strategy, they're borderline identical. Both of these waves have four giant medics, each one partnered with a giant heavy. Other bots spawn too, but they're all pretty irrelevant. 99% of the time, it's the giant pairs that ruin these waves. Deal with them correctly, and there won't be a problem. Now, I've gone over strategies for the giant medic combos before, and they do vary from mission to mission, but on the expert waves, there's one easy solution. Spy. Yep, the class that's commonly viewed as total ass actually has himself an extremely powerful niche against these robots. And it's incredibly easy to execute. Max out the swing speed and armor penetration for your knife, and dump whatever credits you have left into survivability. Usually some combination of bullet res, movement speed, and health regen. From there, just wait for the giants to drop, backstab the medic five times, dead ringer out towards some kind of cover, and get back into position for the subsequent medic. The rest of your team can handle the giant heavy and any of the oncoming ads. 
Make sure when you're going for stabs, you wait until the surrounding small bots are either picked off by your teammates or you're out of their line of sight. Otherwise, there's a good chance you'll die before you get your 5 backstabs in. It's worth noting that you don't need a spy, as many players opt for the crit sticky traps mentioned earlier. But the differing drop locations, extra robot spawns, and minimal room for error without a crit screeg or two-way teleporter usually leads to the spy being more consistent on average. I could talk about what else spawns, but realistically, there's not much else that'll hinder your progress. If you can get the medics down, your added damage upgrades and resistances will carry you through the rest. So yeah, spies a godsend. Who would have thought? So originally, I was gonna leave this one out of the video, but recently, I've joined way too many Last Wave Desperation games to keep it off the list. Wave 7 of Expert's Decoy Mission has two very prominent issues that tend to trip up a lot of players. Those being the giant heavies with three uber medics each, and the 12 super scouts that periodically spawn in pairs. All of which drop down alongside giant rapid fire soldiers at the same time. This wave usually goes south when your team starts shooting the uber meds early on. One giant invincible heavy is enough to send your team packing. This forces you to defend near the hatch while the giant soldiers and support bot snipers fire at you from long range, and the super scouts will make more headway as a result. To prevent this, don't shoot the uber medics. Okay, look, I know that sounds rudimentary, but for this wave in particular, I can understand why some people autopilot to their doom. From waves 1 to 6, every uber medic is only attached to a small robot. Still not optimal to attack them as a non-medic picking class, but you wouldn't be met with a hard punishment for attempting to do so. That unfortunate conditioning now pays a heavy toll. If you shoot the uber medics on this wave, good chance your entire team is getting wiped and playing the rest of the game on the back foot. As far as team comps go, I'd recommend an engineer, two heavies for maximum DPS, a medic killer courtesy of a sniper or demo, a tank buster of your choosing, and probably a medic for that final spot. The shields and shared canteens will be much needed wipe protection. If you're playing NG, I'd recommend you set up the two-way teleporter somewhere near the front, be it in this little tunnel or a bit further back behind any of the walls. This will let your team stock up on crit canteens during the periods of downtime and also let you catch an emergency super scout if needed. As far as the medic picking classes go, my best advice would be to invest in survivability. As a demo, be sure to get some resistances or movement speed to avoid and or tank all the shit flying at your face. If you're running a sniper instead, all he'll need is bullet resistance to prevent getting too shot by the enemy snipers and some kind of health restoration, be it health regen, health on kill, or equipping the cozy camper. The giant soldiers are very potent damage dealers and will whittle your team down over time, so I recommend each of your heavies invest two points in destroy projectiles. For the most consistent strategy to keep yourself clean, crouch and aim for the soldier's cock and balls. You'll deflect almost all of the rockets coming towards you. That applies to any giant soldier by the way. Always aim for the cock and balls. When all the giant heavies are dead, this is when the super scouts will begin to spawn. Again, in pairs of two. Everyone on your team should be focusing on them first and foremost. Ignore anything else on your screen that might be shooting at you. The scouts are your highest priority by far. If one manages to slip by your team for even half of a second, pop an emergency crit canteen and cut their sprint time in half. If they're rapidly approaching spawn, use the aforementioned two-way teleporter to meet them at the hatch. And that about does it. There are a couple of tanks and a few small bots here and there, but they're mostly self-explanatory. Just make sure the medics aren't shot at, focus the super scouts whenever they show up, and you should be set for an easy victory. And that's how to deal with all of MBM's most annoying of difficulty spikes. Feel free to use this as your main destination for whenever your team gets bottlenecked. I tried my best to make it relatively thorough. For the two-thirds of my viewers who play MBM, I hope this is of great aid in your future endeavors. And for the other third of my viewers who have never played the game mode but still watch my content, uh, why? But thanks anyways. As mentioned earlier, this video's come and go nature will not bode well in the algorithm. So if you want to help me combat that with a like, sub, or comment, that would be much appreciated. As always, thank you all for watching the video. Twitter and Discord are in the description. More content will be coming soon. And that's all I got. See ya.